Hello, this is Thomas Kresge, a ranger with the Game Brass. We have a different kind of video for you all this week. I'm going to go through our arrangement of Cool Cool Mountain from Snowtopia and talk a bit about how it was put together. Most of this analysis will focus on the overall structure of the arrangement, so let's start by checking out the form of the original track. The song starts with an introduction and then goes A, A, B, B, C. And then we always loop back to the first A. So we have an intro, and then three distinct sections of music. My first step when arranging is to take these sections and map out a new form for the arrangement. For this track, we end up with an intro. A, A, B, B, A, B, C, C, A. And then a coda or outro that references melodic material from section A. Once I have the form figured out, we can really start arranging in earnest. One of the goals is to turn what is originally a somewhat short looping track into a full-fledged piece of music that stands on its own. I need to make sure every section leads nicely to the next and contributes appropriately to a satisfying emotional arc for the music without anything getting boring or predictable. Let's go ahead and have a look at this arrangement now, section by section. The first thing I wrote is the intro. Which isn't altered much from the original, but I do mess around with the tempo to make it a bit more dramatic. As well as adding a two-measure break with just sleigh bells. What makes a Christmas song? Sleigh bells, of course. Nothing else but sleigh bells. The first A section is also a near transcription of the original. This is actually something I like to do, which is introduce the music almost verbatim before I take my own spin on it. And besides that, I also just like to hear the originals played by this new ensemble. So the original melody's been put on first trumpet, while second trumpet, trombone, and tuba combine to give us this oompah texture that goes throughout this entire section. And the horn plays a counter line from the original. In the second A section, I'm now doing some legit arranging and variation. The melody has been moved to trombone, and the new counter melody sits on the trumpets for the first five measures. A common addition I make is to harmonize existing lines, and that's what I do with the counter melody. First trumpet is playing the original line, and second trumpet is harmonized underneath, usually by a third, but it really just depends on what works with the chord changes. Meanwhile, the horn is helping with the offbeat texture, but we make it a bit more interesting here with notes on the downbeats of two and four instead of all upbeats. A trick about musical textures is that the more notes included in them, the faster the music will feel. Because this is the second pass through the A section, I want it to feel a bit more exciting, and a more active rhythmic figure will give the effect of more emotion and the feel of faster music without actually changing tempo. An easy way to make textures is to first spell out the chords you have, and then play the notes back individually in a repeating pattern through each chord change. For example, if I simplified the part to just appear as whole notes, we can then see that the horn is always leaping from the bottom note to the top note, then down to the middle note. I also have the tuba play a bit lower throughout this section, widening the overall range of the music and helping to make everything sound a bit bigger than it did before. Next, we're at the B section, and like the original track, I arranged the first phrase to sound more gentle than the second phrase. The trombone is doing most of the textural work here by playing an arpeggiated line. This kind of line works naturally on guitar or piano, but to make it work well with brass, it helps to spread it out across multiple parts. So while the horn is only holding long notes here, those are really the initial note of the arpeggio, and the trombone fills in the rest. Another option would have been to have second trumpet play the final few notes, and we would have ended up with a texture like this. Our second B returns to a more active texture, similar to before. When you have these constant offbeat textures like we hear in trumpet and trombone, it can be really helpful to make sure the players land on downbeats now and then. Especially in a live setting, this helps keep them in time or from flipping the beat around. Looking at tuba, it's really easy to end up with boring or repetitive bass parts if you're not paying attention, and so rather than go back to the quarter note pattern that the original piece uses, I give the tuba a new rhythmic figure that we haven't heard yet. The 
The most notable change to the form is that I repeat the A and B sections before we get to C. In this next A phrase, I pull out a common variation technique, which is to make the music softer. There's no changes in tempo, but we get the effect of the music sounding slower and more lyrical by having the ends of the phrases last longer, as we can see in the melody, and by using textures with longer note values. There's nothing faster than a quarter note for these few measures outside of the melody. I make it a point to change the texture up each time we hear a melody again, and so in these last eight bars we get a new texture that is more active than what we just heard, but not quite as active as the beginning of the track so as to help us smoothly transition into our next B section. Next we slow the tempo and get a chorale version of the B melody. This involves arranging the music to sound more like a church hymn. Texturally, it's not super interesting, there's a couple new moving parts in trumpet and trombone, and so a big part of this is the reharmonization. The original harmony for this section is a diatonic progression that starts on the four chord, F major, and then steps downward, ending with a 2-5-1 in C. To change things up, I'm going to add a few new chromatic chords and extend the harmonies to give us a richer sound. Our new progression goes F major 7, A7, D minor, D flat 7, to C major. It then turns around with a G flat in the bass, and proceeds with F7, E minor 7, A minor 7, B flat major 7, F major 7, G7 flat 9, to C major. The final C major chord starts as a suspension in the second trumpet that then resolves. We return to the original tempo and finally hit section C. There's a couple reasons I haven't gone to it yet. For one, this section is pretty different from the others and has a less melodic and more textural feel to it, and I also feel it's specifically written to lead back to A. So rather than use it in multiple spots throughout the arrangement, I decide to elongate it leading into the final A section. I double the phrase length by making the first eight bars include only half of the textural phrase from the original, and then gradually introducing more elements. This is a helpful technique, which involves spreading what was once a single line across multiple instruments. And now we're on to the finale. Just like how more rhythmically active textures will make the music feel faster or more energetic, having more frequent chord changes, or what's called a faster harmonic rhythm, also helps make the music feel faster. So there's a bit of reharmonization going on during this last section, as well as using some chromatic additions to give this even more momentum. We also get some new counter lines, as when the melody sits on a long note, I have the other players do something to fill the space. I also really like the effect of the music kind of stalling for a moment on some tense chord, which is what happens in bar 104 with longer notes and staggered entrances that use the A section's primary motif. We're gonna see this kind of stop time build again in bars 108 and 112. Now we're approaching the end, and since this is the final section of music, we want a little more drama. So I repeat the final phrase a couple times as the melody leaps between the trumpets and lower instruments, with some extra chords thrown in the final time to build towards a resolution. But rather than going back to our one chord, we get a deceptive cadence. This is the start of our coda and the introduction of some extra arranging to help stretch out the ending and bring the energy back down a little from where we just were. We accomplish this by repeating the final phrase of music, reharmonizing with some richer chord voicings, and then gradually thinning the orchestration and slowing the texture as the final line of the melody descends across the band. get a classic Mario quote here at the end, and finish with a harmonized version of the song's primary motif. And that's the arrangement! Let us know if this is something you find interesting and we can do some more analyses of game brass arrangements. In the meantime, be sure to check out Snowtopia, available on Bandcamp, Spotify, or wherever you get your music from, and we hope you enjoy all of our Snowtopia music videos here on YouTube. See you next time.